What the heck is going on guys? My name is Bucky Roberts and welcome to your very first SAS slash SESS tutorial. Now, the first question I want to answer for you guys is what the heck is SAS? Why would I ever want to learn it? What can I do with it? Well, the easiest way to explain what it is because it's actually a bunch of different things combined to make your web design life a whole lot easier. But I want to talk to you guys about one of them because this is going to clear a lot of things up. So I'll tell you guys a story that whenever I was making my social network, I used this specific shade of blue all over my site. I used it in the links for some backgrounds, for some borders, you know, just on a bunch of different web pages. Now, if I ever wanted to change that shade of blue, then what I would need to do is I would have to go through every single CSS file, find that color and change it one by one. And that's gonna take a long time, especially if I have a boss who's, you know, changing his mind all the time. Well, one of the things that you can do with SAS is you can actually make these things called variables. Now with a variable, you can just stick this variable and I'll show you guys how to do this later. I just want to give you guys a quick example and you can pretty much update the color in one location and it can change it in every single spot that you want it to. So it's pretty much going to save you guys a bunch of time and not only variables or placeholders you can use, but a ton of other sweet features. So the next thing I want to clear up is, oh, I just got like phlegm in my throat. I just ate a roast beef sandwich and <laughs> I put a bunch of mayonnaise on it. So I think that's the problem. Anyways, getting kind of off track here, moving on. What's the difference between SAS and SCSS? I mean, I heard SCSS was a thing I wanted to learn and this tutorial is like SAS or is it, what, what's it going on? Well. They're actually the same thing, they're just a different syntax. So if we just look at this quick example, I know you guys don't know what any of this stuff is, but SAS is pretty much a shorthand version and it doesn't have any of those curly braces or semicolons that you're familiar with whenever writing CSS. Now SCSS, this is what syntax I'm gonna be teaching you guys in this tutorial and this is what I'm gonna recommend learning. So you can learn both of them if you want, but most people use SCSS and it's kind of the newer, um, it's a different syntax, but it's you know the more popular one and the one that I recommend. So, okay. So this is like a new version of writing CSS that's a whole lot better than the old version. Sounds awesome. How do I, you know, like install it, start using it? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that Ruby is installed on your computer. Now, if you have Windows, then go to this website right here, rubyinstaller.org, and click this big download button. I'm not gonna show you guys how to download it because A, I'm on a Mac, and B, it's really easy. All you do is you follow a wizard, click next, next, next the whole time, and then you have it at the end. It's not like you don't have to tweak any weird settings or anything like that. So if you ever installed anything in your life, you're gonna be golden. Now, on my Mac, whenever I bought this, Ruby actually came pre-installed. But no matter what operating system you have, after you have Ruby installed, you can install SAS. So if you're on a Mac, open up your terminal. If you're on Windows, open up your command prompt and type this command. sudo, well don't type sudo for Windows, but if you're on a Mac, type sudo and then gem. Gem is a program that came with Ruby and it pretty much allows you to download and install things from the internet. It's like a built-in tool and it's actually really useful, but that's not important right now because we're just using it to install one little thing. Install SAS, S-A-S-S. -S. Now, if you hit enter, let me enter my password. All right, I got it, got a long password. All right, so what's installed? And again, I know even though I'm teaching you guys SCSS, that's just a syntax. No matter if you want to learn SAS or SCSS, download SAS. It includes both of them. So that's all you have to do. And I already have it installed on my computer. So that's why my command prompts might be a little bit different than you, the output that it gave me. But either way, that's all you do. SAS is now installed on your computer. And if you just want to verify and make sure if you type SASS minus V, then it's going to print out the version of SAS and this should be the latest version, so SAS 3.4.16 during the time of this tutorial. Selective Steve, I guess that's your code name. Pretty uh, 
weird code name actually, but let me close out of this. All right. So we downloaded Ruby. We don't really need it for anything other to install SAS. We downloaded SAS. We now have it on our computer. Okay. Uh, now what the heck do we do? Well, now open up your IDE, whatever IDE you're using, and just go ahead and make a basic HTML file. Now, before I actually start showing you guys the syntax and all the cool things that you can do with it, I wanna to talk to you guys about one other thing that is kind of weird, but we need to understand. So your browser, whatever browser you use, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever, it can't understand SAS files, and those are .scss files. It can only understand plain CSS. All right, that's a kind of a problem. See, I wanna learn SAS, and we're gonna be typing this new cool syntax, but what's the point if my browser doesn't even understand it? Well, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be typing this syntax, and here's a little demo right here, and I'll talk to you guys what all this stuff means, like I said. And what we need to do after we type it is we need to compile it. In other words, we need to translate it into normal CSS so our browser can use that and understand it. So depending on what operating system you're using, again, just type in um, like SAS compiler in Google. And if you're on Windows, type in like SAS compiler Windows. If you're on Mac, type in SAS compiler for Mac. And this is the program that translates SCSS to plain old CSS that our browser can understand. Now, another cool thing that I wanna point out is the reason that I'm not gonna download one is because I actually have one built in to my IDE. So if you have a JetBrains IDE, I'm using WebStorm. This comes with a compiler. Now, it actually comes with a pretty fancy compiler because instead of typing your SAS and then going to your, your compiler and hit compile, it automatically watches for SAS files and anytime you make a change to those files, it's gonna translate it into the CSS on the fly. So I'll show you guys a real quick example of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click new file and I'll just type like main.scss. Now watch what happens and take note, this isn't a CSS file, this is a S CSS file. So it's a special SAS file. I'm gonna hit okay and it's gonna say okay. Dude, I see that you're trying to create a SAS file. Do you want me to add a file watcher? And this means that I'm gonna watch this file and anytime you make a change to it, I'm gonna look at it and try to convert it into CSS. So I'm like, heck yeah, I do, that sounds awesome. So if you just hit add watcher and hit okay, it's now watching this file for any changes that we can make. Now, again, this is your HTML file and you wanna add a link to main dot css so we just created a scss file which is our sas file and we're actually going to link to a plain css file um how's that going to work because the css file doesn't even exist well whenever we start typing code in here it's going to automatically compile it and create that css file so <laughs> so that was all the confusing stuff we can now finally get in to the actual sas and the first thing I want to teach you guys about that is how to work with variables.